Hey everyone, this is Coach Adam coming at you today with a how-to on hip hinging. So, points of hip hinging, it applies to a lot of different movements. We're talking about the deadlift, um, setting up for the start position for the squat. We've got kettlebell swings, even broad jumps, um, very explosive movements. So, we want to make sure that we are hip hinging effectively to get the most out of our movement. So. We're going to come up with some important tips to think about. First one we're going to talk about is midline stabilization. So um, what midline stabilization means is that we're connecting our abs and our glutes to maintain proper alignment. So when we're looking at proper alignment, what I want to make sure is that my head, my back, and my tailbone are all in one nice straight line. So you can even use this PVC pipe as a little kind of prep and then what we want to do is as we send those hips back are we maintaining contact with the back hip head coming down into that hip hinge what you'll often see a lot of times is if we start to push that butt back without locking that rib cage down that bar is going to pop off the back and we're going to create some excessive arch in the spine so what we want to do is we want to minimize that so what i want you to think about is treat the two individuals as cups so the rib cage is like a cup of water that we're trying to pour out and tuck down. So that's where we're gonna lock and brace those abs. The pelvis, we're going to try to lift up as if you're trying to pour one cup of water into another. So I'm going to create a nice neutral pelvis by squeezing the glutes, tucking that rib cage down, having both cups face each other here. And I'm going to maintain that braced proper alignment all the way through the hip hinge as I come down and up. So think of them as two cups pouring water into each other, locking that rib cage down, and also tipping those hips forward and up. And that's going to help you set up for a nice neutral pelvic alignment in that hip hinge. That way we're maximizing the glute engagement that we're getting on that backside. So that's important for the midline stabilization. Number two, we're going to work on a soft knee bend. So as I'm setting up, for example, for a deadlift, what I want to do is I want a soft bend of the knees about 15 to 20 degrees. The reason why we want to work on that soft bend is it's going to help load the back. We're going to lock down those lats and then that soft bend of the knees is going to minimize any strain that we're placing on the back or the hamstring. So we want to avoid injury. If we are locking those knees out, it's going to pitch my chest forward. Every centimeter that we are going away from the body is going to add that excessive shear compressive forces on the spine. We're going to load those hamstrings a little too aggressively by being way out here. So what I want to do is soft bend of the knee, lock those lats down. We work on that neutral spine coming down and back up. So keeping that bar close to the body is tip number three. So as we come down, we're keeping that bar up against the legs all the way down. Even as we come down to the shins, the bar stays nice and close. We're reducing that strain on the back and then we're pulling those hips forward into that bar. So one nice little drill that I like to use is called a RNT deadlift. So that RNT stands for reactive neuromuscular training. Fancy tip for it, we're gonna use some bands. So what I'm gonna do is just anchor a band to a post or an object out in front. And I'm gonna grab a slight weighted bar to work on these deadlifts. So I'm gonna create tension in that band. I'm gonna pull that bar close. We're gonna work on those things that we talked about today. So I'm gonna create that neutral spine by tucking that pelvis up, rib cage locking down nice and tight, soft bending those knees. From there, I'm gonna keep that bar nice and close to the body coming down into that deadlift, down, 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 down. Once we make it past the knees, we're gonna pull those hips forward, squeeze through the glutes, stand up nice and tall. You wanna add a little bit of resistance, take a couple steps back, still work on pulling those lats back, locking that rib cage down, soft bending those knees. One more time, coming down, nice and slow. Coming back up, squeezing those glutes, working those muscles effectively, all right? So that's an RNT deadlift there. Um, other drills you can do, I like to a lot of times warm up with a good morning. So you can use either a PVC pipe 
right here, place it on the back. We're gonna push the hips back, keeping that rib cage locked down, coming all the way down till you feel tension in the glutes and the hamstrings. From there, we're gonna pull those hips forward, standing up nice and tall. Again, keeping that rib cage locked down. A lot of times in the kettlebell swing, for example, what you'll typically see is the person will either not have that soft bend in the knees and they'll be pulling that weight up here or they'll keep that rib cage flared up at the top. So a lot of times when they get to the top, the rib cage is flared, they're leaning way back like that, producing a lot of strain on the low back. So what they need to do is lock that rib cage down, soft bend to the knees. From there, we're squeezing those glutes, engaging those strong muscles of the core, and that's gonna set you up for a better kettlebell swing. Other than that, um, just making sure you're choosing proper weights. We're warming up with a lighter weight, going up to a heavier weight. If you guys need any feedback on your form or whatnot, get with a staff member. We are around to help check and kind of manipulate anything that um, we feel like could help you guys really maintain and get that into that good hip hinge. Once you've got that hip hinge, you're gonna be moving weight a lot more efficient. You're not gonna have as much strain on that low back and you'll see a lot of good results. So, appreciate you guys joining me today. Don't forget to check out more videos on how to, to move a little bit more optimally. And thank you for joining me. Have a great day.